distractions. There are just many things that can pull us away from nurturing our relationship with God. The next set of resources I will mention are resources that we need to do with other people. The first category I want to mention is formal methods of discipleship. Examples are lectures, seminars, classes, even seminary classes, conferences, retreats, conventions, Sunday sermons, you know, that's 52 times in a year, you can hear that, Sunday school, and here in our church, we even have FPU, Financial Peace University, with Dave Ramsey. Um, it's sort of this method of discipleship that teaches us how God wants us to handle money. And because of technology and social media, we have access to many speakers and teachers outside this church. Uh, we just have to be discerning and wise to know which speakers and teachers would be best for us and for our situation. In addition to these formal methods, another method you can use is one-on-one -on -one discipleship, one-on-one -on -one counseling relationship. It is with someone who is a trained person or a pastor or a minister or other counselors or mature Christians. Um, a lot of times this is a good way, uh, especially if you need to discuss a specific problem in your life or issues that need a lot more attention and support. It's also a good way to advance on your own pace in terms of discipleship. The next resource that you need to use with other people are small groups. Small groups may be called Bible study groups, life groups, connect groups, home groups, cell groups, whatever group you can call it, it's still a small group. Uh, small groups have been around a long time, uh, starting from the 12 disciples of Jesus. And it comes in many shapes and forms. But if you do small groups correctly, you get to interact and talk with people about spiritual issues. You get to know one another deeply and support one another and not just learn ideas. Uh, some small groups, they could be dull and destructive, but if small groups are done right, these are very effective. And uh, what do you mean? Why is it effective? Uh, have you ever saw or heard yourself on video? Yes? I mean, if you're in this church, you'll probably hear and see yourself on video. And we all know why, but uh, whenever you see yourself on video, do you go, oh, that's not me, you know? That doesn't look like me. And then, and then in the video you talk and you go, huh? That, that doesn't sound like me either. Who is that? And then you watch it with people you know, like your husband, your wife, or your close friend, and they all say, yes, that is you on the video. <laughs> that is the sound of your voice. It, it's like, the thing is, you know, you really don't know or see everything about yourself. There is no way that you know all your strengths and all your weaknesses and flaws. There's just spots that you'll never see. You need decent and loving people in small groups who knows you and support you in ways that you cannot do by yourself. So that's why it's never recommended that we grow as Lone Ranger Christians. Instead, we are designed to need other Christians to love us and to support us. And I believe that a small group, when done right, it's not a time of lecture from one person, but it's a time of sharing and learning from one another and from God's Word. And at least for me, a small group is a place where we can learn from God and from one another's Christian experience. Uh, so in every church I've been, there's, there's always small groups. And these groups need not be run by a pastor. Anyone who is a loving person can be trained to run a group effectively. Uh, more often than not, these groups provide another place where we can invite other people to check us out. 
because these groups normally don't even meet at church, but instead meet at someone's home. So I consider the small group as one of the more important ways of discipleship. Now the next set of resources that I'll, I'll talk about, I will call learning by serving or learning by doing. We learn and get discipleship by doing Christian service. This could be teaching Sunday school, adult or children. From there you learn teaching skills, communication, you learn the Bible because you need to teach about the Bible. It could be serving in a session or a board of deacons. It could be running a group or going on a mission trip, um, doing outreach or service projects. You can do prison ministry or Stephen ministry. You can play in our combo. You can learn by doing when you witness to others about Jesus, when you exercise your spiritual gift of evangelism. You grow spiritually when you do all these things. And finally, there are also other creative ways or Christian projects that help you grow spiritually. Uh, you can write an article, uh, maybe tutor children, do an art project for the church, organize a rally, whatever that rally is, organize a sporting event, Organize an all-church hiking trip. It all depends on what kind of discipleship God is calling you to engage in. So that is just sort of my short list of discipleship resources that Christians can use uh, to grow spiritually. And of course the list is not all-inclusive. There's many other resources and methods we can use to open ourselves up to God so we can grow spiritually. Um, but I think part of what is necessary to grow in faith, hope, and love is, uh, I guess just a few tips, you know, part of it is to balance yourself out. Uh, for example, if you're doing too much Christian service and not much learning with others, such as a Bible study or a small group or not much time with God, uh, you know, that's not, that's not the best combination. You can burn yourself out quickly and then pretty soon you're going to start hating uh, service. Or another example, what if you're doing too much learning with others and not much Christian service? Um, that's also not as good. You need to learn to give as well as to take and benefit from others. Or what if you spend most of your time with God and not do service and not learn with others? Um, so it's mostly spending time with God. That means uh, you're like in a monastery. You are meditating all day long. Um, unless, unless you're called to that, maybe some people are, uh, it's not a very balanced way uh, to grow spiritually. Uh, now, of course, there are other times in life when you're not supposed to do Christian service or ministry, such as times when you're experiencing a major crisis or illness. In those times, your job is not to serve, but instead to receive. To receive the care and support from God and from the church. But as you grow, you need to explore different ways and try different things to put you in a position to learn more from the Holy Spirit. So what resources do you use? Well, well I mean, it depends. Um, how do you learn best? You know, what is, what is your growing edge? Uh, what issues do you have? For example, if you have deep personal issues, maybe getting one-on-one -on -one discipleship is best. Um, what are you excited about? What interests you? Um, what costs money? You know, if you don't have money, then you're going to ask what costs money. <laughs> are you on a budget or not? Whatever your situation is, you know, just pray to God and ask God to give you this desire to grow in your faith and the wisdom to know what resources would work best for you. All this is is, you know, just remember that God, God began this work in you way back. As long as you partner with God, God is faithful. God who began this work in you will be faithful to continue His work until it is finished, until we are mature in the likeness of Christ.
Uh, next week, we may talk about obstacles to discipleship. Um, some of the main popular obstacles are time and motivation. We want to partner with God, but we don't have time. And we're not spiritually motivated. Now, what does the Bible say about that? Uh, so that may be for next week, so stay tuned. Um, with that, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for the various ways you increase and nurture our faith. Lord God, instill in us a new desire to grow in our faith and deepen our walk with you. Help us examine ourselves and be open to doing new things to increase our love for you and for others. Continue to guide us, Lord, in this lifetime journey or process of faith. In Jesus' name, oh. amen.